right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to build ourselves a, an inventory component and we can store all of the, uh, the videos we need in that component and stack them accordingly and organize them accordingly and so forth. So uh, that's, uh, that's what's up next. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, welcome back. So we've got the basic uh, idea of spawnable items working and the ability to pick up items. We can click our inventory. We've got three apples now and we can wait for these to come back. We collect some more apples when they come back and we hit I and now we've got six apples in our inventory. So our little basic inventory is working, but that inventory isn't very useful. So let's, uh, let's change this uh, uh, inventory system around and do this just a little bit differently. Uh, we're going to leave that there for now so that this stuff still works, but we're going to come over here and under items, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this folder inventory. This inventory is, and it's all caps. Let me change that name. I have to go to rename inventory and it won't let me. So we'll delete it. <laughs> Create a new folder. We'll call it inventory. There we go. All right. So what we're going to do now is create a component. So we want to create a blueprint class. And we're going to make it a actor component. Uh, scene components are, are special kinds of things that display inside the scene. So we want an actor component. And we're just going to call this inventory underscore comp. I like to keep things straight on names by that convention. So here's our inventory component. All right. Well, we need a few variables. So <clears throat> the first thing we need is an integer. And uh, we can call this the... Uh, uh, number of slots so that'll be a value that says how what are the maximum number of slots in this <clears throat> and we'll set a, a, a default value of minus one now why is it minus one because my inventory system that I want for the character isn't going to have a number of slots. But when we use it in a chest, we might want to limit the number of slots that a chest has, a specific number, 10 or 20 or whatever. Or a bigger chest might have 40. But the character, we're going to leave it uh, kind of unlimited slots. And we're going to base how much the character can carry based on the weight that they can carry rather than on the number of slots they have in their inventory. So they can carry a lot of very small items, even if they're all take, not stackable and taking up, you know, many, many slots, that's okay. Um, as long as they don't go over their weight and their weight is something, the weight they can carry is something that will grow based on their stats and they get experience points. They can spend some additional points increasing their weight carrying capacity. Uh, the next thing that we need is the actual inventory. So what is this going to be? So this is, we'll just call this uh, inventory and the type that it's going to be is that struct that we created. So it was called item struct and it's going to be an array. All right. So far, so good. Now, when we want to add an item to the inventory, we're going to need a function. And we're going to call this function add item. All right. And it's going to take a, an input of one of these item structs. So we're going to call this the item that we're going to add. And the type is going to be the item struct. All right. But we're not just going to actually, this inventory isn't going to be made of these item structs. I almost forgot about something. Let's go back to here. And let's go to blueprints and structure. And we're going to create a structure called inventory item. 
construct because we need to store a little additional information with this. So the first one of this struct is going to be the item and this is going to be that item struct. And then we're going to have a count. And this is based on that max size, how, how many are in that slot. So this inventory item is going to represent basically a slot. And if it's a stackable item, this count will just increase when we add them on. If it's not a stackable item, then it'll just stay at one. So that's all that struct really needs to be. It's just a little wrapper. And so we're going to change this to inventory item struct. And if we were to go in here and split this pin structure, you can see now that we've got, oh, I didn't change that. This also needs to be, oh no, this is just the item. <clears throat> we can split that apart. Actually, I want to recombine them. Uh, and I'm going to split them this way. Uh, break the item struct this way because I want access to this item as well without having to recombine them because we got to get some information out of here. So when we add an item, first thing that we need to do is uh, if this item is stackable. So if it's not stackable, if this is false, so let's do a branch. So if it's not stackable, all we're going to do is uh, uh, add new item. So let's create a function called add new item. And let's create another function called stack item. And we'll get to those. So add new item is going to be very simple. It's going to take as an input the item. Come on item and that's going to be that item struct same as the other one and all we're going to do is take this inventory and we're going to do an add and we're going to add this item to the inventory ah no we're not <laughs> we are going to add it to the inventory but first we're going to make an inventory item struct with that item and a count of one because all we're doing is adding this is the add new item function oh this is stack item sorry let's x that out of there we want it over here add new item is going to get item that's going to be that item struct we're going to make a new item with that item struct and a count of one and we're going to add this to the inventory so that'll add a new item to the inventory so we've made a determination when we call this that we just need to add a new item and it'll get a count of one and it'll be in there. All right. Stack item is a little bit more tricky. We've got an item. We need to uh, break that item struct because we need to determine this max size. Uh, we need more than just the item though because we also need as an input the uh, inv item that it's going to be added to. Uh, or do we want the index? Let's come back to this and let's make another function. I'm going to make it find item all right input call it 
item. It's going to be the in. It's going to be the item. We're going to get our inventory. We will do a for each. We're also going to have a return value of inventory item struct. And this is going to be the item, the inv item, inventory item, and its index. will be an integer. All right. There's our return node. We're going to, we just got an inventory item. We got to make sure it's the same kind of item. We got to find <clears throat> one of these that matches what's in that. So if we split this struct pin, we've got this array element. If we split this struct pin, we've got all of this. And is it going to be, you know, I probably should add like an ID or something to this. Maybe we can just base it on the name. You know what? That's a good idea. Uh, item struct. Let's, uh, a new variable. We will call this. ID. We will make it. Uh, does this thing have the concept of a GUID? It does. We'll make it a GUID. make one of these things I'm going to have to figure out I think I can uh, I think I can do it when I make them so all right let's go back to our inventory component uh, we should have an ID in here now item ID all right and we should have an item here actually I'm going to recombine these and I'm going to recombine these mm. here's our array element let's break that here now I'm okay with breaking this I think all right, splitting it rather. Okay, here's our item ID. We need to split this struct pin and we need to compare this item ID here equals Squid, this item ID we need a branch if it's true we're going to return this array element item here and this array index here when that's true otherwise it'll continue looping and here's the condition okay so this is finding it based on that ID if it finds it it returns the actual item and the index all right so under stack item what we need to do is call that function first we need to find this item and the item we want to find is 
I guess I could have just passed in the ID instead of the uh, instead of the item. So let's. Uh, this is the item. We can pass that in. So we find the item, and we get the inventory item. We get the. Uh, Let's do this. So we've got the inventory item. Let's break it. Let's get this count and ask if this count is greater than integer greater than integer stackable max stack size. Okay. Let's branch. If it's greater than the max stack size, <clears throat> we're going to return so this is stack item on stack items output we want a boolean and uh, we'll call it stacked so if it's true we're going to find our return node here if it's true we're going to return false if it's false we're going to return true and we're going to I guess that's all we uh, need to do stack item is so we need to stack the oh we need to stack the item so here what we want to do is take this we've got this index so we want to get our inventory we want to get a copy at this index Oh, I guess we already had the inventory item. We want to set array element. Set that array element at that index. But not to just what's out of here. So I'm going to break this link. We're going to do a make inventory item struct. It's going to have this count plus increment. So that's going to have to go here. And this is going to go into the count here. And this is going to go into, uh, we want to split this and take this item and put it into here. And this inventory struct, we're going to set array element, and this is the item. and then we will click on size to fit but we don't really need to we're, we're setting it at the point where we extracted it from and this is the target array we need that in there and that's a little bit messy I'll clean it up a little bit but basically what we're gonna do when we want to stack an item if it's stackable is find uh, the item if we don't find the item find item uh, if this runs all the way through completed 
Okay, so we need to return one more thing here and then have an output. We'll call it found and we'll make it boolean and on completed we'll get this return node here on completed uh, we'll return found as false we'll return found as true so that'll compile okay so now we'll get a false we'll get a true if that was good okay so let's go back to stack item so here it's found um, that's when we will if this com yeah if this was not found find item comes back not found we don't want to do we need another branch put this in here in here found and then if it's not found we're going to do stacked as false we'll just come up here all right so if this wasn't found then stacked was false because it didn't find it in the inventory but so actually what we could then do is so add new item good add item all right now we're back to here so if it's stackable what we'll do is go stack item we'll call stack item and the item will be this item and we'll why are we sending an inventory item into stack item stack item are we using that inventory item no we're not we don't need that let's delete it add item We've got the item if it's stackable we'll call stack item if it's not stackable we'll call add new item item and if stacked came back false let's do a let's pull this up here let's do a branch if it stack came out false let's do add new item so now it's just got to add it so for whatever reason stacked came back false we'll just add a new item otherwise we will have stacked to the item if it's stackable we'll try to stack it first if it can't find a place to stack it that's fine it'll come back here and it'll add a new item if it's not stackable it will just add a new item and i think we have our basic concept of an inventory in place now what we can do is call this add new item function and we can do that here in player character base but first we have to add the component so let's add a component inventory component and down here where we're adding to this inventory we don't want to do uh, this over here item collected add this is what we want to get rid of so we've created our we've got our item description we want to get rid of inventory we want to get rid of add and we want to call our inventory component add item there's the item there's that and there's that now our little printout has to change this all has to go away this has to go away 
and what we will add into here is we'll get our inventory component and we will get inventory and we will do a for each loop on that and then we will split this struct pin and we will split it again split this struct pin and we will get the name and we will get this loop body into the print string and then we can take this and delete it we'll compile first and save then we'll delete it where is it in use why does it think it's in use camera item description add item item collected I'm not sure why it thinks that is in use I'm just gonna delete it that delete that yes delete it anyway compile save uh, see it wasn't in use all right this should work as normal just as it did before I hope e e e hit I it only shows one Apple ah we're not printing out the stack value you see these are stackable <laughs> e E, E, I. It only shows one apple. There's a reason. Let's go back to our little printout here and let's do, instead of this, uh, let's do, pull this off and go format text, add pin, uh, and we want the count, count. I'm going to plug that into there. Oh, this is the format. We want to break this. Break this. We want to add a... Well, let me add a pin. Okay, let's delete that. Format text. We'll go. Oh, that's right. You got to put it in here. We'll go uh, zero dash one, and we'll put the item name, and we'll get this count. Put it in there. Plug that into there. That's good enough. Compile. Save. Let's play. Back in first person mode. E. I'll press I. Apple one. E, E, I, Apple 3. E, 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 I, Apple 6. E, E, E. Let's make this a little bit easier and toss down a bunch more apples. Because <laughs> I want to see my... I don't know when I set it to 64. Yeah, I don't want to pick up 64 apples. I'm pretty sure that probably works. That'll probably put another uh, another stack item in there if I go over 64. Um, I suppose we could do it. Uh, where's my items? Items. Apple BP. I probably should have put these in a subdirectory of their own. I guess it doesn't matter. We'll just throw a bunch of them down. They can be inside the wood. If I put down a bunch here, I'll only have to do this a few times. I can run through and pick them all up real quick. 
hit that stack size and see if we get two entries. Just make sure that works. Okay, let's see how many times I got to pick up to do this. <laughs> e, 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 e. By the time I get them picked up, they're going to be respawning. Let's move in a little closer. I'm just spamming the E key. Appearing. Okay, this is helpful. Let's see what we got. I, Apple One, Apple One, Apple 65. Interesting. It's just once it, uh, you know what? <clears throat> yeah, I got to tweak that a little bit on the stacking because. It needs to try to find another stack if a stack is full. Because now it's just filling up with ones. Yeah, little bug. Um, uh, little uh, adjustment here. So <clears throat> the first thing that we're going to do here in find item is I'm going to change the name of it. I like my names of my functions to be very descriptive of what they do. I'm going to call it find available stack item. And what is an available stack item? It's one in which the uh, count is not is less than uh, this max stack size. Uh, to do that, however, our for each loop here needs to change. So what we really want is a for each uh, a for each loop with oh no, we don't need that. For each loop, we want to continue searching. Oh, that's right. So I'm going to move this stuff over. Let's make this decision first. Uh, loop body. So we want to take uh, count is less than max stack size. Or I could have used greater than, but it makes more sense this way. And we're going to put a branch another branch in here hold B and left click and we get a branch let's hook this branch up here and true we will continue on to this branch and make sure that they're correct and we'll plug this into here let's move this back a little bit now what will happen is it'll find the first one that matches that also has these sizes available. So if it's already filled up, it'll skip it and move on to the next one. And hopefully this will now let us start filling up other stacks. So let's see. Let me get in the middle here and start spamming the E key and get a whole bunch of these. Come on, come on, come on. How many do I? Okay, they're reappearing. Let's see where we're at. I, 44. And we need more. They're reappearing. It's nice that they're reappearing so fast. Faster. I there we go now we've got a stack of 64 and a stack of 22 instead of getting those stacks of one after each one so that's a very simple fix we just forgot to check and make sure that it was a stackable point so So that's working. There we got two stacks of 64 and a little extra. So we can cancel out of that. All right.
<clears throat> so that was a simple fix. Let me save everything. Save selected. So, all right, so there we go. We have uh, built a basic inventory component. We can store, uh, store all our inventory items in there. And because it's a component, we can use it in other types of actors like chests or uh, uh, whatever we want, barrels, anything that we want to be able to store things in. Uh, so uh, this is going to be a very versatile uh, uh, inventory system. So uh, thanks for watching. If you like the video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to get notified when I upload videos, hit that notify button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.